Got it. Oh, Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. We have to, we have to say welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fuck Wellness. I'm McKenna. No, Ken, I was saying we have what? to change our names, not oh my God. <laughs> say our names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like truly so exhausted from driving. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. I have to rename myself. And I have a, well, I have a, an ocular migraine right now. It's just like the absolute worst. That's okay. terrible. All right. We ready? Well, not with that information dropped on me. Oh, I took like a lot of medicine. Okay. okay. Um, it's already better than when I was at Trader Joe's like an hour ago. Okay. So welcome to Fuck Wellness. I'm McKenna. I am Laura. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> I'm Mallory. We used um, to have such a good system. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's happening. Um also I just feel like I don't think that today is the day to do it, but I feel like that we are in desperate need. Maybe the first of Feb- like the first week of February would be a good pod, but once again, I feel like we have updates to share, and so, or at least I do. And yes, so, you have quite a few updates. Yeah, so maybe first week of February we can, we can do that, and great. yeah, we can talk about what we want February to be later. But I have ideas, and I think. It would, they would be fun. So, okay, that's cool. all. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, Okay, so this, the rest of this month, the rest of January, Malar and I are going through our own individual reports like we've done in the past. I don't remember what month we did it last. Was it Women's History Month? We did the controversial did women one. Mm-hmm. And so, then, so much yeah. of that, we're coming back to the wellness trend and presenting on well, not wellness trends, but just kind of like wellness themes, right? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. So today I am going first and Woo! then we'll have Mal and then we'll have Lara and Mal and Lara have no idea what I am going to report on. And if you had to like, I don't know explain to someone the level of the report right now I would say it's about a fifth grade book report (laughs) level is what I'm ready to provide for you guys and so you know ask questions but not too many yeah that's a sweet spot though for like just telling a chill story yeah do you guys have any guesses well actually you kind of know what I'm talking about are you yeah is it what we talked about a few weeks ago yeah a few weeks ago I had mentioned the crunchy to alt-right pipeline and we talked a little bit about that so that's what I'm going to report on today oh whoa okay I I did not know that we were doing yes or that you were gonna do that one okay I I really like the term crunchy I think we should continue to use that crunchy that's like I feel like everyone talks about boulder people as being crunchy crunchy granola oh yeah yeah um okay so do you guys want to just get started? Yeah, let's dive in. Oh boy, my doc is not organized. Also, I'm going to look off to my left. So if that doesn't look good for the for the camera, let me know. I think it'll be but okay. <laughs> it's going to be, it's on my second screen. So it makes Oh yeah, sense. dual screen. Yeah, sorry. All of us are corporate girlies. Not really. <laughs> like, dual, double screens change the game. Agreed. Okay, so let's talk about this pipeline that I'm going to talk about. So, sorry, I'm not going to be able to get through this, you guys. Let me make this a lot bigger. All right. I first want to give some, like, general just thoughts on this concept as a whole. I almost said in general again, but I was worried Mal would laugh at me because I've been saying words twice in a row. But basically, a lot of this I, like, you know, air quotes learned about on TikTok, mostly just, like, the two sides of, like, seeing videos where people are, like, legit so for real about what they believe that might be, like, labeled as crunchy, and then the complete opposite side of people that are, like, like, what the hell are these people talking about? This is, like, so dangerous. Never trust anything that they say. So, 
basically, I just want to talk about how when we talk about this pipeline, I do think, and I don't have numbers, but I do think that it's a relatively small population. Like we think about it in these like big, broad terms, but do I think that everyone who studies herbalism is becoming, is becoming into like going into the alt-right? I do not. So I think that just like when using social media, not to be like annoying about this statement, but it's just so important to like use your discretion and trust your intuition and your mind when something seems a little weird. And there are also a lot of people in like quote unquote crunchy spaces that are educating correctly. So I don't want to like lump everyone together as a whole or, or put someone on a pedestal. So just, I don't know, trust that, you know, what's best for you. And above all, like there won't ever be one single thing that'll make everything 100% better or worse. And there's not really, I mean, to me, like you don't have to be paranoid, but I think that you should always ask yourself the question, like, what is someone gaining from me listening and engaging with this content? And then also really paying attention to how you feel when you're done consuming content. So that's just kind of like my soapbox for a second. Um, I struggle to put together this kind of report because I feel like this is another one of those topics where similar to a lot of things currently in our society and in our environment, there's not much room for nuance in social media discussions. Although I think that there's obviously a ton of nuance about this in real life. So, okay. Basically, wow, cut this out, but this is disorganized document. <laughs> um, so I follow this person. I follow a couple of these couple people. So it kind of started with this one one woman and her handle is called um really very crunchy have you guys heard of her no Mm -mm. so she started putting out videos like I don't know how long ago and she blew up really fast because they're hilarious because people thought that she was doing satire on being like a crunchy mom and the whole kind of like bit with her was that you never knew if she was being real or if she was being fake like she was joking and I think in reality it's probably somewhere in the middle do you Wait, know who I'm talking about? Is her about? child's name concrete? Or no. is that a different person? Okay. That's like an entirely different. <laughs> Sorry. And that's like her, that's not her actual child's name, but like. No, I know. Yeah, that's but the like, bit. When yeah. you said satire of like crunchy, I was like, oh, is it her? But no. Yeah, I'll um link her profile, but it their videos are really funny. And there's so many people that are like, like got on board with her and because she just delivers like, honestly, the absurdity of some things and just such like a really refreshing way about how like when you're with two people they're like fighting over who's the cleanest in terms of like what products they're using and all those things so it's an interesting account to follow but then what started this whole thing for me was that one day she got in like she got canceled like she was going through the cycle of getting canceled because someone she like I actually didn't know what the actual video was but she was essentially either in support or not in support of something and then someone else got mad and was like well that's damaging the public like you've taken the crunchy thing too far and so I started down this like rabbit hole of like the crunchy to all right kind of situation so one of like the other major things I realized when I was researching this is like, I don't really know what alt-right means and I don't really know what QAnon means. So these are all words that I feel like I've heard, but I've never had them like completely described to me in a way that I understand. Like I had an idea of like the themes, but just um, I'll just like give you guys the quick definition from Wikipedia about what the alt-right pipeline is. And it says the alt-right pipeline is a conceptual model regarding internet radicalization towards the alt-right movement. It describes a phenomenon in which consuming provocative right-wing political content, such as anti-feminist or anti-SJW ideas, gradually increases exposure to the alt-right or similar far-right politics. So, um... So, and and then a little farther down, it says the idea of the alt-right pipeline is often associated with YouTube and its video recommendation algorithm. This idea posits that algorithmic bias causes the platform to recommend content that is similar to previously viewed content. So for example, like if you are watching really very crunchy, even though it was satire, you might then be fed in your algorithm more information about maybe being um, against vaccines or, you know, um, against like harmful products in your in the con or like whatever you're consuming or like eating all organic or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So that is like the alt-right pipeline. And 
the other thing that I will say about this, and I feel like this is has gotten controversial kind of things too, but um, when we talk about the like the horseshoe, you guys know the horseshoe model. Why I thought I put in a um definition about this, but clearly I did not. What is the horseshoe model? Um, let me just look it up really fast. Horseshoe. Okay, so horseshoe effect also. R.I.P. Mallory. Sorry for this horrible edit <laughs> that's about to happen. Oh, <laughs> I'm saying like ums every single time. Okay. Horseshoe theory is in political science. This is from Wikipedia as well. In political science and popular discourse, the horseshoe theory asserts that the extreme left and the extreme right, rather than being at opposite and opposing ends of a linear, linear mm-hmm. political continuum, closely resemble each other, analogous to the way that the opposite ends of a horseshoe are close together. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So that is something that like Mal, have you found that people disagree with that or are critical of the horseshoe theory? Mm, Sometimes in the sense of like false equivalency, like assuming that the alt-right and the alt-left are similarly violent and radical, Mm. like like, aka people posit that they're not. Like Like one might be worse than the other. Yeah, like that the alt left isn't doing the same kind of things that the alt right is doing. So I think maybe the horseshoe model is giving a sense of false equivalency between the two groups. That would be my only like. Okay, I do think that's like the criticism that I've heard, but it does make a lot of sense to me because I think that there are some overlapping ideas as we get. For sure. I mean, that's why we had Bernie Trump voters. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I don't know, just keeping like both of those things in mind, kind of when we um, keep talking about this. But one of the other things that was really hard for me to kind of figure out how to communicate was that in in spaces and wellness spaces, I do think that there are things that need to be exposed that are important that they're exposed. For example, like if there's a bunch of crap in your beauty products, like I think that we should know that. And I think that we should be aware of that as consumers. But then like we have now gotten into this whole other arena of like brands now just greenwashing and not actually caring about what is in the product. So it's hard for me because like I do think that people deserve to know that certain things could potentially be harmful to them or how like our food system works and how it might not always have our best interests, like the people's best interests in mind. Um, Or also the importance of learning from other cultures, wellness practices that like can significantly improve our lives, like gua sha or meditation, you know, those sorts of things. So I think there's a lot of good that is in with some of the like farther out there stuff. And I think that's when it gets difficult to like discern how can I take part of this and leave some of it, which is why, I mean, we've seen in how like a lot of cults operate or that guy who like um, started the idea of lizard people. I don't remember his name. But mm-hmm. how he his like lectures ended up being like eight hours long and he would start talking about really rational things. And then by the end of the eight hours, he has introduced lizard people. And so it's like this. It's like, oh, that all sounds good. All sounds good. All sounds good. And then all of a sudden it's like this big thing. And that's how, you know, we are susceptible to things that I don't know. But it's like the small small. things, right? Like throughout that presentation, it's like he keeps introducing small things where you're sort of like, hmm, okay. And then it just, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that is the concept of progression, I guess. Like small progression that leads to a big ideological change. Progressive brainwash. Yeah. 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 And then once you're like in in the first steps of something, so like you have – kind of tied your identity to something maybe oh I am a person that watched his really very crunchy videos for example and then let's say later down the line she starts kind of saying things it's much harder to disconnect from her after being kind of a loyal follower of hers for so long and so I mean it's just interesting what like our minds will do and there's this podcast sorry go ahead Laura just like the like taking example Like, for example, the person talking about lizard people, I think that a huge thing that happened, I mean, in many instances, but especially with Trump, is like, once the small things got introduced and they're kind of out there, you're kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I kind of have to put myself on a ledge to believe that, but I'm going to put myself on a ledge 
and believe that and other people might think I'm weird but I'm I'm deciding to stand my ground and then once more and more stuff comes out in the presentation where you're like wait this is actually kind of weird but like I already stuck my neck out so I I'm basically like married to this idea and like standing up for this person yeah which is I mean I think dangerous. that's where a lot of the election denialism comes from is people have already committed so much time and effort yeah. to Trump that they're like well I don't really believe in the like that election would be was, embarrassing it'd yeah be embarrassing. it's like they they're like dying on this hill that they don't really be on mm-hmm. yeah um Okay, continuing. So along those same lines, I think one of the main things I've noticed throughout this research is like the focus on fear and widespreading fear of all different things. And specifically in this, it's geared towards um, honestly, like white middle class women, like a Mm -hmm. lot of it is geared towards that population. And it's an interesting thing because there's a whole, um, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes, but there was a whole Washington Post article that um, is really, really good that talks just about kind of that community and why some of them are so susceptible. But um, I think that, wait, let me find my paragraph again. But I think that like when like people are talking about this like fear, it's like fear of doing what you should do to keep your family quote safe, whatever that might mean, things that like have really high value to you. Um, and I also have noticed that it focuses a lot on like individual blame. So it's like, oh, you have toxic products in your house. That's why you are this, this, and this, or you have, you choose to eat this way. Like that is why you are sick. Like those sorts of things, which obviously we know that their Clorox wipes aren't the best for our bodies. And obviously we know like what food might be most nutritious to us. But I think the key piece that is left out here is like the nuance of that's not always possible for everyone. Um, okay. What else? Um, okay. So I want to talk a little bit about this one article that is, was written on the guardian and I'll link it again, but it basically, there's a paragraph in it that says there's a strong correlation between the embrace of wellness woo and been being susceptible to misinformation. And as conspiracy theories and misinformation become increasingly about ideology, it becomes easier to sell both wellness bunk and conspiracy theories as being quote on brand. In other words, if you are part of our community, this is the cluster of beliefs that you must embrace. Big science is evil. Supplements help. You can boost your immune systems. Vaccines don't work. Um, I He could go on. I truly hope that one of the legacies of the pandemic is a greater understanding of the harm that tolerating pseudoscience can do. The good news is that we are seeing more and more individuals get involved in the fight against inf- misinformation. So this part is like hard for me because again, like kind of how I, all of the articles that I found kind of criticizing this situation really focused on like new age spirituality equals misinformation or like equals delusion or equals Mm -hmm. all these things. Whereas I, I just don't think it's that clear of like a clean cut. If you believe in this, then you must kind of be in this other group of that. You believe you don't believe vaccines work or you're anti-medicine or whatever it might be. Or for example, like the pipeline of, um, herbalism to like anti, you know, medicine to anti-vaccine to like anti-government, like that sort of kind of, I guess, stepping stone, so to speak. So I think it's hard though, Ken, because, and I feel like, you know, a lot more people in this space, but like when I think about people in the spirituality space, and I know you could vent about this for hours, like you're pretty much the only person I follow or slash know Mm -hmm. that does that like I guess, isn't in some way perpetuating misinformation on actually like important things. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's like one of the the biggest problems I have with it. It's like, it just feels very I like binary almost. It's like, if you are part of this community, you must, you know, believe those things. And so I see that too, Mal. I just think that's why like, 
a journalist would generalize is yeah, because there are so few examples of people who are not like that, that yeah. I think it's easier to generalize than to not generalize. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which t- for sure takes the nuance out of it. But yeah, mm-hmm. when you're writing an article, I think sometimes he just has to make that jump because it's better yeah. for writing and <laughs> not always in a good way, yeah. but it makes a better article, you know? And it is the population that's continuing to perpetuate harm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's rightfully so. I just think that it's like, I, I just feel like so much is missed from some of it because the people that I know that I'm connected to in real life like genuine like I'm speak- thinking of one person in particular she's like the most like spiritual connected person I'm aware of in like my I guess personal life and she still she's like does things that she thinks are best after weighing the options right so it's like I'm weighing the options of if I should get the vaccine or not. It's like ultimately like I should get the vaccine to protect my family. Like those sorts of things where it's like she doesn't die on the hill just because the the rest of the community doesn't necessarily agree with it, you know? Yeah. Um, But I'll kind of along that same line, it's like a perfect segue because I want to talk about this other account and her name is um, Allie Starts a Cult. Have you guys seen her? You probably mm-hmm. have not. So Ali is extremely outspoken and like about fundamentally disagreeing with new age spirituality, like as a whole, and is very openly critical and um, clear that she thinks that there's like really serious damage being done, which I agree that there is. Um, And I really like following her because she is like a little bit sometimes abrasive. Like it hurts my feelings sometimes when she talks about some things because I'm like, oh, well, like I believe that. And I feel like I have a, a pretty like rational and grounded view on it but she kind of comes at it in a way where it's like almost you feel like an idiot for like having Mm. the whatever belief you have but I do like following her because I think perspective is really important and like as you guys know I've had so many issues with like a lot of spiritual concepts like for example manifestation and with these hot topic issues she's just like really on it about making sure that there's not misinformation um but she talks a lot about how the same thing kind of like I was just saying is like these these communities don't do anything for the nuance or for the people that don't have access or can't like I don't know like talking about Joe Dispenza or these big like name people and basically saying that they're just like junk science which I think some of them really are um that's kind of tough because I almost feel as though someone who is going against kind of trying to set the record straight in a sense someone who is maybe fighting against the misinformation part of me is like they should be abrasive like set it set the record straight like hard like that should be that should kind of feel stingy but also Mm -hmm. part of me is thinking kind of don't be so abrasive or else everyone's going to just turn your shit off because no one likes to feel stupid. Yeah. You know, you want both, but that's hard. It's really hard. And I think that it takes a lot of like internal trust that like you can watch her videos if it's something that you don't, that you agree with and be like, okay, well, she's talking, she's making like good points. I just don't think that necessarily applies to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But in her case, she talks really openly about essentially going into like I don't know how she actually describes it. So I just want to be careful with my verbiage here, but she had like a huge mental health breakdown due to a lot of new age spiritual beliefs. And she was Mm -hmm. like in it, like in it deep, like retreats, like spending thousands of dollars, like all this stuff. And so she has, I think, obviously rightfully so a lot of anger towards those communities. And like her comments, to be fair, the people that comment on her videos that are kind of wrapped up, really wrapped up in new age stuff, it's like so cruel the what what they're commenting. They're like, or they'll say things like, "Do they I make tell... things about her appearance and stuff?" That and also just like I can tell you're like vibrating at a really low frequency, and that's why you feel this way. And so like when I see those, you comments, are not I'm enlightened, like, and I can tell no, exactly. <laughs> that's the that's. 100 like that's real like they yeah, say that I commented that and, <laughs> and so Laura's that actually part of- one of these people we're talking mm-hmm. about <laughs> yeah 
that part is hard for me because I see those commenters and I'm like, shut up. Like you're being an idiot. Like you are proving the her point, which is important. But I do think that there's like these swaths of like people that are similar to like how Trump has like all these supporters, like blind supporters, where it's like just these groups of people that are like going to believe anything that they are fed and yeah. aren't going to have like, you know, the personal boundaries to be like, Hey, wait a second. That doesn't feel like it aligns with my values. Cause it's easier not to have to figure out your values. If someone gives the answers to you or what they want. But once again, circling back to the beginning, like that's where I think it's important that you're really thinking about like, what is the person who is making this content getting from me and from like spreading fear? Like what is, what is the end goal? Cause there's usually always an end goal. Um, but this brings me into like another kind of example, Lara, I was talking to Lara about it and it's this like big trend on TikTok that's like developing called the lucky girl syndrome. <gasps> Can we and, please talk about this? Yeah. We're gonna talk I about think it. I've been doing it wrong. I've just started saying lucky girl, lucky girl, like <laughs> in my brain, not doing anything other than just being like, Lara, lucky girl. <laughs> I mean, that will bring whatever you works. <laughs> yeah. But basically lucky girl syndrome is like this these two girls were talking about it and it went viral on TikTok and they were explaining how one day they just decided they wanted to run an experiment. And the experiment was essentially, what if I just believe that I'm like the luckiest girl and that I just like get everything that, or everything like works out for me. Like it's just, it all works out. And so they did this experiment and like things started to really positively shift and it was like a really great thing for them. And so now there's all these people, like it is blown up on TikTok, but all of these people kind of now teaching that same, mm. you know, strategy of like, okay, now just like visualize being the lucky girl and say these affirmations and here's what you can do. And here's a ritual and all this stuff, which is like, sure, that's fun. Um, but Allie from Allie Starts a Cult was like, this is so harmful, so damaging. Like, how could you ever like perpetuate this idea? Like she was just so firmly against it. She's like, this is bullshit. What? And I feel like Allie, I find you're a lucky I girl. You're a lucky girl, Ali. <laughs> I feel like I find myself somewhere in the middle where I can Ali's point, I think, is not everyone can just, I'm a lucky girl, their way out of things. Like there are really serious big things in people's lives, like, you know, resources, food, money, shelter, all those things that you can't necessarily just like visualize and be like, I'm so lucky, and then like find your way out of some of those situations. So that is like number one. And I agree with her on that. However, I think that there is a healthy way to do this like visualization exercise. And I think that can be a really fun thing to do as long as it's not being cloaked in like a toxic positivity sort of way. So like being a lucky girl could mean that things are taken out of your life to like make room for other things, but it might not feel that way at the when it's happening. So I, I am cautious of things that like, don't allow the full spectrum of emotions. However, that is just like one example of like how clear, like there's like this big, like push for all this, like this new thing. And then there's all these other people who are like, this is like the worst thing that you could ever do. (laughs) And so it's really like interesting to be on both sides and see like both of those mindsets. Can I tell you a story? Yeah. It's about this because yeah, you had texted me about lucky girl syndrome and I looked it up and that same day, I think I went to yoga and I love my yoga teacher so much because I feel like he's a really good balance of like the real with like the very woo woo idea of life. And I went up to him after and I was, I kind of talked, I was like, have you heard of this like lucky girl syndrome it's literally has a definition on the on the on the internet now because of kind of TikTok and these videos and then I started to explain which I still believe that this is my problem with lucky girl syndrome is that I am so convinced that if I start to actually believe like wholeheartedly that only good things will come my way and like you know I'm I'm on call tomorrow, but I firmly believe that I will not be called in. I am so convinced that then the world will be kind of just say, I I got you, bitch. Like <laughs> you thought you thought you weren't gonna get called in, but because you thought that, you're the actually the opposite will happen. 
And I tried to explain it to him as I feel like karma will somehow come into play and then I will not be a lucky girl with only good things happening to me. And he goes, well, you know, Laura, karma, that's not the you're like that's not the proper use of that word everyone uses it we kind of got sidetracked then and we didn't ever talk about lucky girl again but he was like karma is literally just your actions it's a it's like a hindu word or it's like in buddhist belief that karma is simply your actions and it's not a positive or negative it's just your actions that determine the next things that happen in your life it can be totally positive as well and I was I like that so I wrote that down but I feel the same way Laura like I always am so careful of even like saying that I'm grateful for my life or being Mm -hmm. like so thankful because I'm like well as soon as I say that like yeah always got a knock on wood after that yeah it's so superstitious yeah no I agree that's I think my anxiety (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> coming into play that's so interesting because I think I've had pockets of feeling like that before but I don't think that I currently feel like that mm-hmm. I don't that's think good. you currently feel that way Ken <laughs> really I good. think that you yeah it's great because I think your mindset for this next year has been so much more positive than I've allowed my mindset to be yeah. Because in my mind, the the max I can do is say, lucky girl. And that's all. <laughs> like, well, I can't actually believe that I will be lucky. <laughs> well, to be fair, though, about that belief, it's like, okay, let's take the, take like my personal, one of my beliefs. So like, I had a really strong internal belief that like men aren't good and that there aren't good men and that like, it it's going to be impossible to be in the relationship that I would want to be in. And I that belief wasn't changed. That belief now is changed, even though men continue to disappoint me. (laughs) That internal like core belief has, hasn't changed at all. I mean, sorry, has changed. (laughs) And we still believe Guys, I need everyone to know that I drove all, literally all day tomorrow by myself or uh, tomorrow, (laughs) tomorrow, yesterday. I got you. (laughs) Guys, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have gone first. (laughs) I don't think it would have gotten better the later that we went, though. This is good. Anyways, what I'm trying to explain is that my belief has entirely changed within the last four years, let's say, uh, that specific core belief that I had, even though there aren't necessarily the actions that, like, proved that it wasn't true. And also, it was not changed by me sitting down and saying to myself, a hundred times a day that men are good that did nothing for me Mm -hmm. same way that you could sit and say you love your body a hundred times over but it might not do anything for you to change that internal belief that you have what changed that internal belief was like really hard fucking work so I want to be like clear about that and I think the affirmations helped however the way that I would utilize like a lucky girl syndrome thing would be to like I don't know like spend a few minutes a day visualizing on what it would feel like to have everything Mm -hmm. kind of work out for you the way that you would like it to. So rather than to be like, wake up and look in the mirror, no offense, Laura, about this for me. Like, look at you. You're a lucky girl. We're going to- Lucky girl. (laughs) Everything's going to be lucky. So (laughs) yes. Any any more thoughts about lucky girl syndrome? Well, I feel like at its most basic level, it's just believing that good things can happen to you. Yes. And that's my point with all of this is like, I do not think that inherently having that belief is a bad thing. No, I mean, but that's also like, I don't think that, I mean, again, this goes, I guess, back to what we feel like the definition of the spirituality is, but I also feel like that's just like a basic belief we should have in ourselves that good things can happen to us. Yeah. Isn't that just positive mental health is believing that good can happen in our lives. Is that what that is? I, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, maybe we need to dig into that. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I think the lucky girl syndrome just, yeah, at its most basic level to me, just feels like a confidence in the fact that there we have hope in the future and good things can happen to yeah. us. And those things should be like fun to play with, right? Like they should be an exciting thing that you're like, oh, this is a new way to visualize this thing that I want. Like, for example, I visualize 
like if I'm working on a romantic relationship, like I like to put on a song and I like to visualize about what that relationship would feel like to me. I and agree with Laura. Over, I like move along with my day. Like this is the this is like the hardest thing for me. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to like feel what that actual feeling would be if you got the thing that you wanted. Well, yes, but also to allow myself to even visualize in the first place good things yeah. happening to me. Really, I did not know this yeah. about you guys. Yeah, because the world can see inside of my thoughts and yep. see what I want, and if that vision is and too do the, for the world, they'll be like yeah like yeah can I say something that might sound mean but I don't mean it to be mean hit it yeah love when you lead it off like that to me and I have had thoughts like this before like where I'm like oh if I think I'm gonna have a safe drive I'm gonna like crash whatever the way that I've gotten myself through those thoughts is like that's such a self-centered viewpoint of like thinking that the world is like listening to me being yes and then gonna spite me yeah. Do you know what That's I mean? That's not mean. That's not mean. I get Alara that. Laura doesn't agree. No, I just like, think that I have bitch. a personal <laughs> hormone monster earth ruiner that's only listening to me. We all have our own personal. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's, I used to feel a little bit that way. And then I just kind of realized like, well, if I don't, if I don't root for me, like no one else is going to root for me. And I'd rather. Yeah. If some if shit's gonna go down, I'd rather be rooting for myself. Isn't fear at its most basic level though self centered? Like, aren't all fears kind of yeah. self centered? Yeah. So I'm no, I'm agreeing with you, Ken. I'm just I'm no, but I'm I don't saying... know though because like, what is a is a fear of your plane crashing? Is that self centered? Yeah, because well, yeah, you're saying saying fear is because you're gonna die. Yeah. Well, that's the same as saying, is it self centered to think I'm gonna crash on this road trip? Like. Yeah, why do you yeah. think that your plane, your car is going to be the one that goes down when all the others are out there doing their thing? Like, I think the fear of having a bad childbirth, like that is, if mm-hmm. we're arguing that something like that is self-centered, I think all fears can be kind of like grouped into that. But not necessarily mm-hmm. like in a bad or good self-centered. Like, right. it's more no, like a, it is in a quite literally way. self-centered, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is how we're wired. We should we should be doing that. But I think that, yeah, I think that the difference of like thinking the what we were just talking about is like there's like a force that is going to come in and ruin something if you think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think for me, I will ever. I don't think for me, the idea in my head of oh, that's self centered of me to think that the universe is going to see my happiness and destroy that that's not going to stop me from that mindset unfortunately right of course not no 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 no. which I wish it would but no I feel like it's a lot easier to fear bad things happening to me than believe that good things will happen to me well but do you think that fear is a distrust in yourself uh yeah probably like uh, that is projected similar to Lara onto a third party universe (laughs) yeah yeah because yeah because I feel like that because I'm just curious about where the fear comes from like if I like using my relationship example again like if I am visualizing a healthy relationship and I don't want to do that because I feel like I never would get that if I admit that I want it isn't that just a fear that I'm scared what I will be if I don't ever receive it for me, it's more of like admitting that something that I, it, like I care about something enough and then mm-hmm. it being taken away. Mm. Like if I admit I, you know, I don't know, want to be a millionaire, <laughs> whatever, it'll be like by me admitting that I've just like given up the chance to be that, even though by okay. admitting that I want Literally more money. Same though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I understand is irrational. I would like to be very no, but it, clear. I don't think it necessarily, like, I feel like this was really strongly my mindset like four years ago. Laura and I are just not at the maturity <laughs> level. You know? No, it's, no, it's I'm not maturity. It. It's not maturity. It's just, it's just hard to like, I think I, there are still things sometimes that like swing me back into it. I just think it's a hard, a hard thing to get over. Yeah. But I don't think that my, I don't think that, there's a 
I think that there is in some elements of my fearscapes a distrust in myself, but also there's a big part of me just knowing that a bunch of unfair, uncool shit happens to people every day that never mm-hmm. deserved it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And being like, well, I know that those fears aren't due to a distrust in myself, just kind of a knowledge that like sometimes really shit stuff happens. Right. Yeah. And like, I, I can, I can believe that because it happens to other people, it could just happen to me one day, you know? Yeah. Right. But I feel like, I guess how I was explaining it, like, okay, let, if we can use Mal's example with like the, the money. So my question would be like, well, what, ha- like diving deeper into that mindset of like, well, asking, keep asking why, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm, I'm scared if I say I want a million dollars then like, I'm not going to get it. Or like, well, why? Like, what is the fear around that? Or like, you just go deeper and deeper and deeper of like, what would happen if you didn't get that? And it's like, well, probably nothing would happen. Like those, and you kind of start to see that those fears, I don't know, maybe don't have as much power over you as you think that they would. But I don't mean that when I think and visualize good things that I'm not very aware that bad things still happen all the time randomly. Like, I don't think that a everything is like choreographed. I think that I'm still aware that I could visualize this. I could meet someone. And then a week later I could be in a car accident. You know, like, I don't think that those are all correlated. Yeah. Yeah. I think I like appreciate the randomness of life and the spectrum of emotion. And I trust that like, because I felt so low so many times, I trust that like that gives me the ability to also feel so high Mm -hmm. and That whatever comes to me on that spectrum, although it will be extraordinarily painful, it's, I'm capable of managing it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good point in that only being afraid of the lowest parts of your spectrum, like, forgets that you can also feel the highest parts of your spectrum. You're not thinking about when that will happen you're only thinking about when the horrible things will happen but you know to maintain neutrality hopefully good and bad things are coming your way yeah yeah and I think sometimes there gets to be your own like personal relationship especially with the lower end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. of like pain and grief where like recently I was in kind of like a shorter time period a lot of pain and I remember it's like I kind of like greet it as like I hate it that it's there but like kind of like an old friend in a way where it's like it comes into my awareness and then I have this really sinking feeling of of like whatever it is that I'm really having a lot of sadness about and then I like feel the pain and I like I I like this is gonna sound silly but I like greet the pain in a way Mm -hmm. I literally am like hello I remember you I know you I hate you Mm -hmm. and and you can stay until it's time to leave. And like that, I think has helped me. Like, I, I can't like hide from it anymore, I guess. Yeah. Is what I mean, which takes some of its power away. But then, you know, then I have compulsive thoughts about people in my family dying and I'm like, I would never survive. So there's like a spectrum. <laughs> so I don't know. We can't always control our brains. Yeah. Anyways, that's pretty much all my, all I have. <laughs> that was quite a tangent. We just <laughs> Um, yeah I I discussion. just want to say I'm sorry for that being so discombobulated I don't think it was as discombobulated as you think it was I think it was very structured oh thank you um I did want to read one last paragraph from the Washington Post article that I mentioned and I'll link everything in here but um I think that this is like a good interesting thing to end on It says, in 2009, Charlotte Ward, an independent researcher on alternative spirituality, religious beliefs outside of conventional groups, began to notice a hybrid of conspiracy theory beliefs and new age culture cropping up online. Two years later, she co-wrote a paper titled The Emergence of Con... This is a hard word. Mm Conspirituality. In the Journal of Contemporary Religion, she and co-writer David Boas, a quantitative quantitative social scientist at University College London, noted an emphasis on patterns and connections in both conspiracy culture and alternative spiritual beliefs. Nothing is as it seems and nothing is an accident. These worldviews make public, sorry, that was a quote, quote, these worldviews make public and personal life 
respectively seem less subject to random forces, and therein lies part of the appeal, they wrote. Ward and Boas defined conspirituality as a, quote, political spiritual philosophy based on two core convictions, one core to conspiracy theories and the other rooted in New Age belief systems. One, a secret group covertly controls or is trying to control the political and social order. And two, humanity is undergoing a paradigm shift in consciousness. Proponents believe that the best strategy for dealing with the threat of a totalitarian new world order is to act in accordance with an awakened new paradigm worldview. Mm. So like the new paradigm worldview is like very commonly spoken about in the spiritual community. And it's kind of hard because like I do agree with parts of it. I think collectively we are becoming more aware and there's a variety of reasons for that. And like, I do think collectively we're becoming more sensitive and there's a variety of reasons for that. But I think to kind of end this whole discussion is why my brain is so busy all the time is because I'm constantly trying to figure out where I fit in a lot of these systems because I can give someone a reading and connect with one of their loved ones that has passed away and then leave and then the next day see like you know all these this language about how every new age thing is rooted in like all right stuff and it just feels sometimes like I'm like I don't know what to believe I can't explain to you why I can do some things that I can do and I still believe in like medicine <laughs> and I still like they constantly kind of flip flop and it's just been kind of honestly a really hard journey that I feel like I'm not even halfway through. You're not even I close like to halfway through. No. Part of your why is to help people with that journey because it's, yeah, I'm sure it's hectic. I agree. I just feel like I'm right now and for the last like two years, I've been frozen mm. in it. And I, I don't really like the feeling of being frozen. I don't like it yeah. either. Like paralysis. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that's all. Was that, that interesting? Was yeah. That was really interesting. Very I learned interesting. a lot. Me too. I'm curious if you guys now, like, if anything, spirituality, spirituality pops up on your feed, like, if you notice anything different. I want to follow Ali Starts a Cult. Yeah. Yeah. Are they only on TikTok or Instagram as well? I think that they have Instagram, but I don't follow them on Instagram. I might I'll have do to some, TikTok. I'll do some research. Okay, yeah. Ken, any final thoughts? No, thanks for listening. And thank you for listening. <laughs> and thank you for presenting. And listening. And being here with us. Amazing. Cool. And see Well, stay tuned for our other episodes. Yay! With me and Laura! Yeah, we both get to be teachers. Professor Sherwood is done! I don't like that very much. Have a good week, everyone. Okay, bye! (laughs) Bye. Bye.